take a look at the number of Democrats who are calling for impeachment proceedings, uh, proceedings to start. Among them, 10 of the Democratic candidates running for president in 2020. Joining us now to break it down, political analyst, talk radio host Rashad Ritchie and Brian Mudd, West Palm Beach, Florida. Nice to see both of you. Uh, Brian, you. man, the president's got to be loving this politically, isn't he? Oh, no doubt about it. We see how big this field is. We remember what was said about the 17 back in the 2015 cycle. And the biggest thing at this point is, if you're the president, I actually think you like the idea of potentially running against Joe Biden because he might not energize new voters the way that perhaps a mayor Pete would, for example. Hmm. Inter interesting thought. Uh, Rashad, to this point, uh, the Democratic base just loves talking about impeaching the president. We'll put that uh, graphic up showing how many of the Democrats have talked about starting impeachment hearings. Some have really held their fire when it comes to this. So it, be it begs the question, is it worth the price of firing up or the reward of firing up the base talking about impeachment hearings when we know from polling it doesn't exactly poll all that well with swing voters? Well, it's not polling at number one with swing voters, but it does poll at number three or number four. And let's be very clear, it's not just Democrats who are saying that impeachment hearings or an inquiry needs to take place. Uh, okay, you're going to bring up Justin Amash, okay, it's one, one, one congressman right. who's been, who's been, need to, who's been, need been attacking the president since day one. Amash, right, let's okay. be very clear, Congressman Amash is a Republican who decided to actually stand up and say I, the offenses are impeachable. You can't allow the Republican how many, to out progressive Democrats on this uh, issue. <laughs> That's an interesting perspective. I didn't figure that's where you were going. Uh, way to bring it back to the conversation. Appreciate that. Let's look at how the president is uh, attacking folks out on the campaign trail, who he's paying attention to. Our uh, friends over at the New York Times, Joe Biden, 21 times the president has attacked him, Bernie Sanders, 14. Amy Klobuchar, only once. Rashad, uh, if you're not on this list and the, Demo and the president isn't attacking you, uh, should you be worried? You should be very worried. The president of the United States is strategic in who he attacks and how he utilizes his ability to brand other people or to marginalize those people. So if you're not on his hit list politically, then you're not really registering. You're not on his radar. Uh, the fact uh -huh. of the matter is Joe Biden is the formidable candidate here in a one-to-one -one matchup based on polling data. Yeah, for, for sure, especially in Pennsylvania, Michigan, uh, and Wisconsin. This brings up an important point, and there's this debate really within uh, the president's campaign staff, Brian, which is, do you attack Joe Biden and elevate him to that one-on-one -on -one matchup status that he seems to be enjoying right now vis-a-vis -vis the president, or do you allow him to just keep punching and not counterpunch? president's been reported to say, essentially, if he can brand somebody, if he can give him a nickname, then he feels like he owns him. Which side of the debate are you on this one? Well, Leland, you know my opinions are data-driven, and what I was talking about with regard to Biden maybe being the best matchup and staying focused on him, if you take a look at the president's polling right along throughout his administration, he performs worse among adult-only samples, bumps up a little bit with registered mm. voters, and best among likely voters. So the president would fare best theoretically against a Democrat that doesn't bring new voters into the mix, and I yeah. think that staying on with Biden is the best chance to keep those new voters at bay heading into next cycle, and almost anybody other than Joe Biden, frankly, might be somebody who has a better chance to energize new voters for uh, for Democrats in 2020. If you think about somebody like Beto O'Rourke, who certainly did that uh, in Texas. Uh, gentlemen, I know yeah. you'll understand as accomplished hosts on your uh, own right that we're a little short of time here, so I appreciate you guys coming in. We'll talk soon.